Hi, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today I'm at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a cased pair of Dougal percussion muzzleloading pistols. James D. Dougal was established in Glasgow as a fishing tackle maker, but transitioned over to building guns in London in 1863 after introducing his lockfast action the year prior at the World's Fair in London. These large bore pistols featured an especially fine dense scroll engraving that even extends onto the breech end of the barrel. The smooth bore Damascus barrels have bead style front sights that are signed J. Dougal, 59 St. James Street, London, and marked with London proofs. There are no rear sights. The breech plugs have a pierced platinum plug. The locks are signed J. D. Dougal in banners, and the half link stocks have horn forend caps, blank gold wrist extensions, checkered wrists with attractive borders, and compartments in the pommels. Pulling this out of the case, these are some big pistols. We can see the muzzle end here is very large. Rock Island has this mic'd at a 68 caliber and it is every bit of that. Looking at the muzzle here, there's a beautiful little border going around the muzzle of the barrel here and that scroll work extends just a hair past the front sight coming about half an inch or three quarters of an inch away from the front sight. Something I love about these English arms are the tight scroll work and the ratio between the large bore barrel and the small ornate wood stock. There's just something about the look of this and the proportions of it that I just find very appealing. It's something that you see across these English arms, whether it's a pistol, a rifle, um, really going back you know, kind of to the brown bess and forward into their long range muzzle loaders. You see these similar design elements. The tight scroll work on the lock plate is beautiful. It goes up into the nipple area of the barrel and onto the hammer of the lock, spreading into the top barrel flat as we move forward from the breech and back from the action into the barrel tang and the barrel tang screw. On the side plate side, we have one lone lock screw, no side plate, but even this single screw is engraved just a little bit to give us some ornate texture on an otherwise pretty plain side of this muzzleloader. The horn forend cap is nice. It adds a little bit of color, different from the iron and steel around the rest of the pistol. The barrel and the barrel rib are Damascus, and the ramrod pipe itself looks as if it could be Damascus as well, but I'm not sure if that is a surface treatment myself or not. Continuing with our tight scroll work, the ramrod entry pipe is very short, very fat to accommodate this thick ramrod, but it features some nice traditional scroll work as well, kind of on this bottom side of the stock. The barrel tenon plates on either side are engraved, including the screws themselves, although the tang pin itself is very plain on this side. Several of the cased sets or pairs of pistols that I've looked at this week have all had a plain extension on the wrist. I'm not sure if this was intended for the owners to have them personalized or engraved with their initials. We do see that in some original sets of pistols where these plates will be engraved with the owner's name or initials. But on these, like the others that we've seen this week, this has been left plain. We have a very traditional English trigger guard here wrapping around, going all the way down to the pommel. Fantastic engraving, matching the rest of the muzzle loader all along the trigger guard. The screws themselves, we have two screws holding the trigger guard on. They are engraved as well. The same quality engraving that we see all the way around. One of the most interesting aspects of this pair of pistols are the small compartments in the pommel. And in this pistol, there are a few percussion caps still in here, uh, which I find pretty interesting. I think it probably goes down about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter in this cavity here. It's a neat little element. Uh, we don't have a patch box obviously on here to hold some of those percussion caps, but there is space in the pommel. Just a neat little detail on this set you don't see very often. The pommel is engraved with similar matching scroll work that we see on the rest of the pistol as well. 
as interesting as the pistols themselves are, the case and the contents of the case, I think, are just as interesting. This case contains all of the tools needed to take these pistols out and to shoot them. Inside the case, we have tools like this patch cutter here, very similar to the patch cutters that we see today. Not sure if this is the original patch cutter from the set or not, but that is in there. We have several brass ramrod tools here for your loading needs. Two different ramrods here, one for each pistol, and the ramrod ends are threaded for these tools. There's a little bone or ivory container here included with it. It looks to be turned, everything's threaded. Very beautiful little piece. Definitely separate from the muzzleloaders themselves, but a neat piece of history nonetheless. And in the case, we have an R.D. Walker's Best Foil Lined Ground Edge Caps, number 54. With some very original looking labeling there. Neat little piece of history. No caps in this tin, but it's neat to see what an old school cap tin would look like. Very neat illustration or print here on the label. I love that. A small metal powder flask is in this set, but judging by the bore diameter on these pistols, I don't think you'd get many shots off with this small of a powder flask there. Overall, this is a fantastic looking set of really neat period of English arms making. Sense like this, you don't find all the time. You do see examples of these dotted through history. While it's nothing outlandish or incredibly special or unique about this set, it's a very fine set and a great example of English arms making by Dougal. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I have. If you'd like to see more pictures of this set of muzzleloaders or any other muzzleloader that the Rock Island Auction Company has in-house, check out their social media pages. They're on all the social media platforms. They've been posting some fantastic pictures of these and many other muzzleloaders out there. Their describers work diligently to find historical reference and information about their muzzleloaders. I've seen them at work. They do a fantastic job. And it's great to see information about these muzzleloaders being cataloged and saved and open really to the public. It's not every day that somebody like me is allowed to come in and look at museum quality muzzleloaders, get hands on with them and talk about them and share them with you. Many times we think about these being locked away in museums or in private collections, not to be seen by the general public and Rock Island Auction Company has given me a great opportunity here. I can't thank them enough for letting me share these fantastic muzzleloaders with you. If you'd like to learn more about these muzzleloaders or any other kind of muzzleloader out there, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.